Welcome back for the second in this year's series of Bikes of the Tour videos. We're here in Brest just before the grand depart of this year's Tour de France and the atmosphere is really starting to build. It feels like the Tour de France. We've got crowds gathering here again. We've got the loudspeaker in the background. The teams are just coming up for sign on and we're about to go and look at some more bikes. It's the day before the Tour de France and as you can see the weather has changed. The heavens have opened here in Brest and they are raining down on Jakob Fuglsang's Willier Triestina Philante SLR. This is a new frame launched just last November and reviewed by myself on cyclingtips.com recently. And as you can see Jakob Fuglsang gets, as you might expect, the custom Astana paint job on the Willier Philante. As we see quite often from Willier, the paint job is uh, almost a work of art. It's certainly something to behold here. It's sort of got this chrome effect to it. We have the, the, the chrome seat stays, this sort of metallic blue and yellow as per the Astana team colors at the front of the bike. And that all fades down to the black near the bottom for a pretty stunning looking bike now in, in the flesh. Astana are running the Shimano Durace DI2 11 speed group set, still no sign of that 12 speed, we'll keep an eye out. And the Philante SLR being disc brake only, obviously has a Fuglsang here running on disc brakes. Those disc brake rotors are mounted onto a set of Karima 47 MCC WS Plus tubular wheels. These wheels are known to be pretty light, coming in at 12, just under 1200 grams, thanks to this unique carbon bladed uh, spoke setup that Karima have used and mounted to these wheels uh, the Astana team are running Vittoria's Corsa 26 millimeter tubular tires. Now the 26 millimeters were initially just for the pros they are available in limited quantities and it's interesting to see just the uh, step up that the Astana team are making in terms of tire size not by much from 25 to 26 but nevertheless it following that trend that we've seen recently of increased tire width. Another sponsor of the Astana Premier Tech team is Ceramic Speed and as such this bike has Ceramic Speed bottom brackets, Ceramic Speed oversized pulley wheels there on the rear derailleur and we're also told that the wheels have a Ceramic Speed uh, bearing upgrade kit in there so it should be smooth rolling all the way for Jakob Fuglsang. One particularly interesting thing about Fuglsang's bike here is his use of the integrated handlebar and stem from Willier Zero SLR frame. Now the Philante SLR does have a very specific uh, integrated handlebar setup for uh, the internal cable routing. It comes with a nice little integrated top cap that smooths out the, the whole stem interface there. But uh, Fuglsang has opted for yeah the bars off the, off the Zero and that's most likely because as Fuglsang was riding the Zero last year before the launch of the Philante, he had these traditional drop handlebars specifically made for, for himself. They're not available to the public and that's most likely why they have carried across onto the new Philante SLR. They are completely compatible with the Philante. They can still run the internal cable routing uh, and it gives Fuglsang that traditional drop handlebar that he seems to prefer. Out front, Fuglsang has a cage mount for his Garmin head unit. He's perched on top of a Pro Logo Scratch saddle. He uses the Look Keo Blade Carbon Ceramic pedals from the French pedal manufacturer. And in terms of vital statistics, uh, Fuglsang is running a 39.53 on the front with an 11.30 cassette at the rear. These tubular tires from Vittoria actually measure in at 26 millimeters, just exactly as they say on the, on the sidewall. Lastly, in terms of weight, Fuglsang's Willier Philante SLR weighs in at 7.2 kilograms. So we've just spotted the Bora Hansgrohe team out on a pre-race recon ride or training spin just a few days out from the Tour de France and we've actually just spotted Daniel Oss's bike here and there's a number of interesting things that uh, sort of caught our eye about this bike. What looks like a specialized S-Works Roman Evo Murr saddle now, if you've seen an article earlier this year from James Wong on the Cycling Tips website, you would have seen that James actually spotted this saddle in the background of an Instagram post and made quite a bit of speculation as to what it might be. And again, there's still no confirmation from Specialized exactly what this saddle is, but looking at it, it's clearly uh, adopting the mirror technology as we've seen previously in the, in the power mirror saddle. We've got a close-up look of this new saddle here now and we can confirm it is very, very much like a S-Works Roman Evo saddle but it does have that 
mirror technology. Basically what that mirror technology is, is a 3D printed liquid polymer that allows specialized to, it just allows them to create a saddle that has varying densities through, throughout the saddle, that which, which foam just wouldn't, wouldn't permit. Moving to the sides of the saddle, they have, specialized have firmed this area up again. And again, that's one of the benefits of using this 3D printed liquid polymer technology in that where they can make it soft in one location, very, very light and thin in another location, then they can, they can stiffen up the edge of the saddle where you want that support. And that just wouldn't be possible, I imagine, with a, with a foam saddle. Really, it seems like this sort of 3D printed technology, we're seeing it coming into bar end extensions, computer mounts, uh, saddles, and, and uh, quite a few other places on the bike and in uh, ex diff different accessories that riders are using. It really seems to be the technology of the future and I expect to see many more 3D printed iterations of, of current designs in, in the near future. One other thing we did notice about Daniel Oss's bike here is just the, the tires actually. And while we've seen earlier in the spring, the kind of quick step were using the specialized turbo cotton clincher tires on Roval's new Rapid CLX wheels. We did see the Bora Hansgrohe team stick to tubulars for, for some of the races um, and, and certainly we're running a mix of tubular and, and clinchers more often than, than the kind of quick step who solely used clincher tires throughout the spring. Well, it appears now, at least by looking at Oss's bike, that the Bora Hansgrohe team might be about to make the switch to clincher only for the Tour de France. We see he has the, the same turbo cotton clinchers on, on these Roval Rapid CLX wheels. Uh, he's running 28 front and rear. And we checked his pressure there, around about 73 PSI. Now, I'm not sure if he has it set up race day specific pressures here for a recon ride, but nevertheless, interesting to see the lower pressures that, that riders are running now. Daniel Oss is, is quite a tall guy um, and 73 is perhaps on the lower side, but again, that might just be for, for, for a training spin. So no idea as to which kind of tubes are in this. I would hesitate a guess that is probably a latex tube in here, but again, no confirmation from the team or specialized on any of this. It seems to be very top secret information, much like that saddle that we just had a look at. Ahead of stage one of the Tour de France, we have managed to get a hold of Mike Tunison's brand new R5. This particular bike is his second race bike. He actually has an R5 and an S5. This version of the R5 has all internal cable routing. The previous version that the team was riding was external brake cables. All of the cables are routed through the ACR system in the stem and the frame. Jumbo Visma will be running the Durace 11 speed DI2. So this particular bike doesn't have the blue front tire, but the bikes that the guys will be racing during the Tour de France have blue front tires. The blue tires signify a collaboration with Swap Beats to jointly promote cycling in your daily life. Mike Tunison's relatively larger framed bike with the Shimano Dura C60 wheels weighs in at 7.3 kilograms. My assistant measured the tires and they came in at 25.7, but they're not fully pumped up. So we're here outside the Bahrain Victorious team bus and we think we've spotted the new Merida Scultura. Uh, this is the similar bike to what Marc Padun used to win the last two stages of the Dauphiné Libre recently. And just from looking at it here, it looks like it's Merida's version of the sort of all round lightweight aerodynamic road bike that we see so many brands coming out with now. It's got the, first of all, I suppose the most instantly noticeable thing about the bike is that they've cleaned up the front end entirely. No more brake hose reaching down to the front brake caliper. Everything seems internal now. They have that uh, integrated bar and uh, stem setup. And moving towards the rear of the frame, we can see that uh, Merida have also opted for a slightly dropped, not as extremely dropped as we see in some frames, but a slightly dropped uh, seat stay seat post interface there. And they've also gone for that sort of modern wider setup of the seat stay so they come almost straight out of the seat tube, flare right out and then drop towards the, the, uh, the rear hub uh, rather than going straight down at an angle to the rear hub. It's not as aggressive as we've seen on some other bikes like that new Pinarello Dogma F that we have on, the, on cyclingtips.com this week. But nevertheless, it's still, uh, still a, a 
vastly different looking back to the previous sculpture that we've seen. Same, same sort of paint job, same colorway, but uh, getting up close and having a proper look at it here, there is some noticeable difference to the bike. Here we have one of the first sightings of the brand new Lapierre Excelius SL3. This bike was announced literally just yesterday and it's the bike of Bruno Amaril for the upcoming Tour de France. The Excelius SL3 is Lapierre's version of the lightweight aero all-round bike and we can see here that they've taken the same approach with this updated model. As you'd expect from a new bike in 2021, Lapierre have gone for a fully integrated and internal rooted cockpit so all the cables and wires are internally rooted through the stem into the head tube and then on into the frame and that head tube is probably a good place to start with the up updates to the actual frame because to house this new internal cable routing we can see that Lapierre have had to make that head tube that bit bigger they've had to redesign the, the rear end of the, the head tube as well and that redesign continues into the top tube where we can see previously on the Exilius SL2 we had a quite distinctive ramp at the end of the top tube Lapierre have now done away with that it's a smooth transition straight back all the way to the seat post furthermore the distinctive seat stays that completely bypass the seat tube and join the front triangle of the frame right up here at the top tube they have also been redesigned where on the previous version of the frame they had a much more distinct curve to them as they reached down towards the rear hub the new seat stays are perfectly straight all the way down and they're a slightly different shape as well. That's kind of the theme for the whole bike here. On the face of it, it looks very similar to the previous bike, but when you get up close and personal with it, and especially if you had the opportunity like we just had to have the previous version of the frame sitting here beside it, you can really spot some significant differences. The down tube is quite significantly larger. It's also reprofiled and it runs down to a bottom bracket which has also been redesigned. That bottom bracket then extends into the chain stays which again have been redesigned and are even more bulbous than before. Overall, as I said, the bike on the face of it looks very, very similar to the outgoing version of the Exilius, but actually up close it's clear to see where Lapierre have made, the, have made some significant changes to the design here. In terms of Amaril's own bike here, he runs a 130 stem matched to 42 centimeter handlebars and all in all this bike weighs in at 7.4. You might be thinking to yourself 7.4 kilos for what's said to be a new lightweight bike but bear in mind this is a size XL, again 130 mil stem and Shimano's Dura C60 wheels so it's not exactly in its most lightweight variation here and I imagine that Davigodou's setup will probably weigh in much less than that. Whoa! Here we measure these. 42 mil. Exciting day here for Cycling Tips. We have an exclusive on the Jumbo Visma 2041 Tour de France team. We have Van Aert, Martin, Vinegard, Kreuzwijk and Roglic all lining up in this year's Tour de France in this very limited edition Cervelo kids bike yes it's the uh, first time we've seen this bike fully internal cable routing we can see that Jumbo Visma have swapped across to the three wheel setup quite controversial there it's still not approved by the UCI but we're hoping that comes soon uh, on top of that we have measured these tires in 42 millimeters remember those days when we were riding 30 mil tires that's a thing of the past Jumbo Visma are now right up to 42 millimeter tires on this and of course the ultra modern super wide saddle that we see a lot of riders riding these days the front pedals as you would expect these days linked directly to the wheels for the ultimate in terms of dry train efficiency doing away with that chain remember those days we were waxing chains again another thing in the past we've just seen how how far bikes have come along now the weight of this bike this is Cervelo's lightest bike ever weighing in at just 4.3 kilos absolutely unbelievable again quite controversial given that the UCI have recently increased their weight limit um, but still Jumbo Visma seem confident that they can make it past the uh, the commissaries at the race here today one last thing here as we've seen disc brakes are now a thing of the past like their rim brakes beforehand this bike solely relies on putting your feet flat on the floor for the maximum stopping power well, that's a wrap for another round of Tour de France bikes. Let us know in the comments section below which of these bikes was your favourite. Did you spot anything that perhaps I missed? And of course, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already done so to keep up to date with all the videos we'll have during this year's Tour de France.